Just uh, got done running an AFIT test on the Acadia here. And as we can see, our number two is flowing a lot more than the others. What's up, everybody? Uh, got a 2019 GMC Acadia here that uh, has been setting a P21... 9b fuel trim cylinder balance bank 2 so what what this code is basically talking about is there's a fuel trim imbalance between cylinder and cylinders on bank 2 uh, this is a, a fairly easy thing to diagnose if you're in a dealership uh, you get to use something called an AFIT um, that basically can flow test all the injectors on the vehicle and the only thing you got to do is unplug the ECM. Uh, I ran the AFIT on it this morning. I'll post a little clip of that in here. And the results are, yep, cylinder number two flowing 23% more than the other cylinders. So, it definitely needs a number two injector. Why? Well, injectors kind of common problems. Um, things are, you know, very tight tolerances on those, and they just can go bad. They can leak, they can drip. Uh, this one's spraying too much fuel. What's causing it is, is a little bit of a back history is this car was originally diagnosed uh, just a couple weeks ago, I think, with a, a bad thermostat. Another common failure on these motors for some reason. Thermostats just go bad on them. Like, this thing's got, let's see, 72,000 miles. Needs thermostat. So... Apparently, this fuel trim cylinder imbalance code wasn't in here before the thermostat, and it is now after the thermostat. And the uh, the shop that had this car working on it, uh, for some reason, thought an oxygen sensor would fix it, so I put an oxygen sensor in it, but that's not it. Um... But the AFIT proved it, it is a fuel injector. Um, and I want to try to see if I can't use aftermarket tooling to kind of find which injector is leaking or spraying fuel too much or just has the, the that imbalance compared to the others. So we're going to try to do that. Uh, if I can't, well, this video will be pretty much ended here, and y'all guys will just see me putting a fuel injector in. And I have a, an idea of what's wrong with the fuel injector, and I'll kind of show it to you whenever I get it out, if if that is the case. If not, I'll still tell you what I think happened. But um, let me get into the scan tool and see if I can't find some data pids or something that can kind of help point us in the direction of which injector is bad since I know which one is bad. So I got out the GDS to, uh, cause I know GDS has a few extra things that like the snap on or an all tail or launch might not have. So I wanted to get it out, try to find some things in it that I could correlate to my AFIT test. And uh, one thing that it has is a uh, fuel injector balance test. You do this with it running and it, you basically just click each injector and it disables them and as you can see our numbers kind of correlate with our uh, our uh, AFIT test and I'm not sure if, if I wrote these out into percentages if they would be similar or not but as you can see our highest drop was 2 followed by 4 which is what we showed in the AFIT as well. 
so it's kind of kind of interesting this might this might help um, the strange thing though is four says it has a high drop like two but yet I think the aphid said it was actually less drop so um, I have I've run this a couple times two is always higher than everything else um, but I'm gonna get the snap on put back up and see if I can find this test in the snap on see what it shows okay in the uh, functional test menu of the ECM we do have this automated injector balance test so let's see what this does I was just saying, have the engine running. Okay, and now it's doing this fully automated. You can see it's on number two now. It's giving slightly different pressure readings. It's almost like it's reading the low side pressure for some reason. Just let this continue and see what it comes up with. I'm not sure if it's like fully opening each injector or if it's turn them off. But I can I can feel the engine stumble every time it it does one. So complete. Looks like cylinder one was 40. Cylinder two is 52. 43. 48, 45, and 46. So, so this is indicating number two is also dropping more pressure than the others. So maybe this is an indication right here, something you can use as a test to help pinpoint which injector would be causing that imbalance. Um, really though, I mean, this test and the uh, one in GDS both show that number four is also dropping more pressure kind of than the others so maybe this thing needs two injectors but the eight fits pretty good and it only said number two the the big difference between the AFIT test and this though is the AFIT for it to be like really really accurate it needs a cold engine so when, I, when the engine's cold, the fuel rail can't be boiling the, ga the, the uh, fuel off. So the cold engine, basically get, you get a little more stable of a reading, whereas this has got a hot fuel rail and it can, can kind of change some things because you can get pressure just, just off the heat. So I don't, I don't know if that's skewing these numbers a little bit or not, but that's two tests and two different softwares showing uh, number two has more uh, fuel pressure drop than, than the rest of them. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna dig, see if I can't find some more stuff. So I got the Altel out and Altel's got pretty much the same thing. It said you have to trigger each one individually I already ran it once and it does show that a uh, number two is higher than the others so I'll just kind of go through this again I don't like how none of these really tell you like when you can go to the next one because I can tell like whenever I hit it I can still feel that kind of like stumbling and I can still hit another button. So I kind of, I kind of waiting until I feel the, the stumble go away. And every time you do this, you're going to get sometimes drastically different numbers. But as you can see, cylinder 1, 284 this time, cylinder 2, 375. And if you look, 375 is a good bit higher than the rest of them. So, 
I think we're kind of on something with this fuel injector balance command test uh, that these three tools have done. I wish I had my, my launch scan tool here, but it, I don't have it here with me. Um, Cause I'd like to see it do the same test as well. Now, is this conclusive? I, I have no idea. Um, but I mean, when you're when you're limited on on what you've got, I would kind of go with this. Uh, if if I'm dealing with a a bank trim imbalance code, and I've got if I can run this test and one injector is drastically different than the rest, as we can see here. Um, I would I would probably call that injector bad. Um, I mean, I definitely am since I know the AFIT failed it because the AFIT, like I say, it's, it's very accurate. Um, but this this might be viable. So I broke out the big guns. Their channel one is on their oxygen sensor. Channel two is on pull command number two. Uh, channel three is on pull number four command. And channel four is on number six command. So as you can see here with uh, our oxygen sensor voltage, the, the computer is going to be trying to drive this lean and rich. So up would be rich, higher voltage would be rich, lower voltage would be lean. So it's driving this lean and rich, okay? But every time we seem to have a number two coil fire, we get a rich pulse. Same here, here, here. So you can kind of see a pattern that when we get a number two fire, our next pulse is lean, or is rich, I mean. So, that definitely looks like an injector that is firing more fuel than what it's trying to, to, to command here. Since the, each bank can basically be controlled uh, separately. It doesn't, it won't, act, this thing do, isn't actually controlling each injector separately as far as pulse width. You've got a bank to bank pulse width. So it can only drive the bank lean and rich. So as this is lowering that um, pulse width on all these injectors, we, we should get that whole lean effect. Whereas we're getting like it pulling lean, but yet bumps of of richness so I think this is pretty conclusive um, whenever I get the new injector put in here I'll rerun all these tests and kind of look at this again to see if we see it kind of just more of a, a nice gradual up down lean rich flow one thing you want to do if you're going to take one of these fuel systems apart is do the um, depressurize command to kind of keep you from having such a, a mess with the gas on snap-on their special function stuff is under functional test kind of sometimes uh, and it's going to be under output controls and depressurized fuel system um, with the launch and all tell you're going to go under special functions and you'll you'll find this under special functions so we're just going to do this and um, yes, engine idle, what it's going to do is basically just turn the fuel pump off and let it run until uh, it's out of gas, basically out of fuel rail. So I'll start this and uh, come on. So fuel pump enable command on, so we're going to turn this to off and the engine starts to stumble and we should die in just a second hopefully
getting there. There we go. So basically we just kind of starve it of gas, cutting the, the low pressure pump off. So now we're good to turn the key off and uh, take some fuel lines loose without making too big of a mess. And of course, don't forget to take a battery loose. That way you don't accidentally wake the car up and reprime the system. And remember, you still got a hot engine, so uh, put your rag over your line when you crack it loose because as you can see, it's still, still sputtering. That's all the fuel being boiled off that's, that's in the rail still. So you just kind of crack the line, have a rag over it, let it kind of just do its thing for a few minutes. Okay, so we got them out. And what happened, I've, I kind of had a feeling what happened, but I, now that I've got it out, I can tell. Um, I don't know if it's gonna pick up too well on camera, but this is number two. And as you can see, of course, they didn't change none of the Teflon seals or nylon seals, whatever they are. Um, so I'm gonna pull both sides out and put all new seals on it because they had to pull both sides out to do the thermostat. But I'm not, I'm not real sure if you'll be able to pick this up on camera, but this injector got slightly bent when they they pulled it out i really don't know if it's going to show up on camera maybe but uh it is slightly bent now i'm not gonna hate on too much about it because it happens i've been them um it's just the nature of it. sometimes these injectors are really hard to get them out uh, especially if you don't have the special tool that pulls them out even with the special tool sometimes they're in pain and don't want to come out and sometimes you got to persuade them a little bit with a little bit of a pry bar and that's kind of what they did they use pry bar to pop them out uh, you just kind of have to look at them real good when you pull them out and you see that you bent one save yourself some time eat it put one in it um they just didn't notice it i guess whenever they got it out but here we are uh, yeah i got the reels back in here and this would also be a prime time to do an upsell for walnut blasting because as you can see if i can get the camera in there right those uh, valves are uh, pretty dirty in there so, uh, be a good time to do a, a, a valve cleaning with a walnut blaster. That one's not going to focus because of that wire. But, uh, yeah, GDI maintenance is uh, every now and then you got to do walnut blasting on the intake valves. Get them cleaned up. So, uh, we'll see what they say. Uh, if not, whatever. Uh, it's their car, not mine. Okay, we got it back together and uh, got the Pico hooked up. I'm kind of surprised. So, let me uh, show you uh, the old one, what it looked like before. Okay, so we've got, you can kind of see down here where it's trying to do this up and down, up and down, you know, lean rich. Well, here, zoomed in a little bit, you can see just kind of it's, it's all over the place. Okay, now to see the known good, look at that. <laughs> Drastically different. So, can we figure out what's wrong which injector it is off the oxygen scissor stuff maybe i mean still not as good as the a fit but i think with the oxygen scissor readings the uh, scan tool balance check uh, function which i'm going to do again which we'll go ahead and do it again real fast um 
you know, when, when you just kind of, ah, I got to start it over. When you just kind of like tie it all together, you know, I think you can probably nail down which injector it is causing this uh, fuel trim imbalance issue on, on one bank. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. I'm pretty happy with the results of the testing. Granted, I, I knew which one to look for because I already had an AFIT test that told me which one was bad. But now that I kind of seen it and did the testing with the tools that most shops have available, if you don't have them, you should probably try to get them. And uh, pretty pretty happy about it. Let me get the scan tool fired back up and we'll uh, redo one of this tip just on the snap on again. Oh, automated injector balance. There we go. So we're going to let this just kind of go through this thing again. Okay. So I've done one. I, I do like how it's just automated. It automatically starts going. And since we've had the battery unhooked, you can tell it hasn't run any before. So it's kind of going through them. Our number two is actually the lowest, whereas before it, it was the highest. And we almost have a, a bank to bank difference here. This this could be normal. Um, this could be due to fuel trims, like if if bank one, which is all these, is a uh, fuel trimmed you know a little lean a little rich compared to the other side it's still working off this that base pulse width that is setting for each bank so seeing that that's there's some variation from one bank to the other bank I, i'm going to say that's going to be just fuel trim issues um so i'm not really worried about it just knowing that there's not a drastic difference between one and another one you know, that's, that's probably the thing to look at. I mean, here we've got seven pounds difference and five pounds difference. It's not as not as close as over here, but you know, it's brand new injector versus an 80,000 mile injector. Right, or 70, 72,000 mile injectors. So, you know, it might, it might, free up some more later you know where or whatever so but i'm gonna drive this thing for a little while and make sure it's good to go but it's pretty interesting it's pretty pretty neat so hopefully you guys enjoyed this um uh, and of course if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button uh share it with people if you want to i mean anything helps so uh got any questions leave it in the comments i'll do my best to answer it like always um it's not fuel trims and stuff it's not something i'm really strong on but i'll try to help you out if i can